In this session, we're going to look at fixed overhead variances. So we'll look at the various different types of variances that we can calculate. Um, these are expenditure and volume variances, and sometimes we'll be also be able to calculate efficiency and capacity variances. Um, but that depends on the um, costing system that's being used. The first thing to note about fixed overhead variances is that um, the variances that we can calculate depend on whether we're using marginal costing techniques or absorption costing techniques. With marginal costing, our fixed overheads are very straightforward. It, we um, simply have one variance that we can calculate, and that's our fixed overhead expenditure variance. The reason it's so simple is because with marginal costing, we just treat um, fixed overheads as a period expense and we don't include any element of fixed overheads in our unit product costs. With absorption costing, however, the situation is more complicated. With, the, uh, with absorption costing, we do include an element of fixed overheads in each unit's cost. And as a result, um, we can have variances resulting from different amounts that we spend on overheads, as well as um, variances caused by the fact that we're producing more or less than our original um, budget. So we have expenditure variances, we have volume variances, and those volume variances can sometimes be split um, further into efficiency and capacity variances. It's worth noting, however, in both cases, whether we're using marginal costing or absorption costing, the calculation to um, ascertain our expenditure variance is exactly the same. Um, and in both cases, it's very straightforward as the expenditure variance. Let's first of all have a look at how we calculate our expenditure and our volume variances. So in order to calculate our variances, we need three different figures. First of all, the standard fixed overhead per unit multiplied by the actual output. Secondly, I need what my original budget, um, budgeted fixed overheads were for the period. And lastly, I need um, to know what the actual fixed overheads for the period were. The difference between my top two figures, that's the fixed overhead volume variance. And this um, is the variance that's caused because we've produced more or less units than we'd actually budgeted to produce. Now it's worthwhile knowing uh, how we calculate whether this overhead volume variance is favourable or adverse. If it's the case that the actual units that we've produced were higher than the budgeted units, that's going to give us a favourable volume variance, whereas if the actual units are lower than the budgeted units, that results in an adverse variance. Then we can calculate what our fixed overhead expenditure variance is. And this is very straightforward. It's simply our budgeted fixed overheads less our actual fixed overheads. And unsurprisingly, if I've spent more in reality than my original budget, that gives me an adverse variance. And a favourable variance is where I've actually spent less on my fixed overheads than I'd originally budgeted to. Let's have an illustration. So here we have product B. Um, there's a standard fixed overhead of six pounds per unit. We originally budgeted to produce 20,000 units. So overall, my original budgeted fixed overheads was going to be 20,000 units at six pounds each. Well, my total fixed overheads sh um, should have been 120,000 pounds. But I actually produced 18,000 units. 
and by actual fixed overheads were 115,000. So what we're going to do, we're going to calculate the fixed overhead expenditure variance, the fixed overhead volume variance, and lastly, the total fixed overhead variance. So we need to calculate those first um, three numbers. Well, my standard fixed overheads for actual output, that's 108,000. And that's the 18,000 units that we've actually produced at £6 per unit. I'm going to compare that, first of all, with my budgeted fixed overheads for the period. That was uh, 120,000. And there I've got a difference of £12,000. And that's my fixed overhead volume variance. And remember, it's adverse because the number that I actually produced was lower than the budgeted number that I was to produce. Next, I can calculate what my fixed overhead expenditure variance is. Well, this is the difference between my budgeted overheads of 120,000 and the actual overheads of 115,000. So that's a £5,000 variance and it's favourable because the actual overheads were lower than the budgeted overheads. Finally, I can combine those two expenditure and volume variances and that will give me my total overhead variance. So I've got a 5,000 favourable variance in, in terms of expenditure, a £12,000 adverse variance in respect of volume, so overall I have a total overhead variance of 7,000 adverse. Now where our fixed overheads are being absorbed into our product costs on an hourly basis, whether it's machine hours or direct labour hours, then our volume variance can be split into two components. The fixed overhead efficiency variance and the fixed overhead capacity variance. So our fixed overhead volume variance was calculated by looking at the difference between my budgeted fixed overheads for a period and the standard fixed overheads for the actual output. And in order to split that volume variance into two components, I need to calculate a third figure. And this is the actual hours at the standard overhead uh, rate per hour. The difference between the top two figures, that gives me my fixed overhead capacity variance, and the difference between the bottom two figures, that gives me my fixed overhead efficiency variance. Now, as was the case when we were looking at um, volume variances, we've got, to, uh, we've got to have a think about how we decide whether our capacity variance is favourable or adverse. Well, we do that that by comparing the actual hours that have been incurred with the budgeted hours. Where actual hours are higher than budgeted, that gives us a favourable variance. The reason for that is because we're spreading those fixed overheads um, across a wider range of hours. So that's going to be favourable. Um, Conversely, where our actual hours are lower than the budgeted hours, that will lead to an adverse fixed overhead capacity variance. So let's have a look at an illustration. We have product C. Each product requires four standard labour hours. And our overheads are being absorbed on the basis of... Um, labour hours and there's a standard fixed overhead per labour hour of three pounds. Well that means that the standard fixed overhead per unit is going to be twelve pounds. That is four hour labour hours at three pounds per hour. 
Our budgeted units of production was 900, but we actually made more. We actually made 1,000 units and we used 3,900 labour hours. So first of all, we can calculate a couple of useful numbers. Let's calculate first of all what our budgeted fixed overheads were. Well, we had budgeted to make 900 units. Each of those units should have taken four hours and there was a uh, fixed overhead per labour hour of £3 per hour. So multiplying 900 by 4 by 3, that gives us £10,800. That was my original budgeted fixed overheads. I can also calculate what my um, actual units produced at the standard rate per unit um, is. I um, actually produced a thousand units. Each of those should have taken four hours per unit um, and each hour should have been charged at three pounds per hour. So overall my actual units at the standard rate per unit is twelve thousand pounds and those figures I'm going to, I'm going to use uh, to help me calculate my variances. So I've got my budgeted fixed overheads for the period, that was £10,800. I've also got the standard fixed overheads for actual output, that's the bottom figure of £12,000. Next I can calculate the third figure I need. This is going to be the actual hours at the standard overhead rate per hour. Well, from my table of data, I know that I actually use 3,900 hours and each would be charged at a standard rate of £3 per hour. So overall, that gives me £11,700. I can now calculate my capacity and efficiency variances. So the difference between 10,800 and 11,700, that's my fixed overhead capacity variance. It's £900 and it's favourable um, because the actual hours of 3,900 were higher than our budgeted hours of 3,600. Um, if you remember, we had 900 units and each should have taken 4 hours per unit. So um, my original budget was 3,600 hours. Next, I can calculate my fixed overhead efficiency variance. Well, this is the, the difference between my £11,700 and the standard fixed overheads for actual output of £12,000. So I've got a £300 variance and it's favourable because um, I should have been using more hours um, than I actually did. So I was working those fixed overheads in a more efficient manner. Lastly, I'm just going to comment on how our variances um, are often interdependent. If we think about the purchase of new equipment, for example, um, that might affect our variances as follows. First of all, we might see um, an adverse overhead expenditure variance because money's going out in order to purchase new equipment. Um, so my actual overhead spend might be higher than my budgeted overhead spend. In addition, because I've got new equipment, I should see a favourable labour efficiency variance because typically new equipment enables us to um, produce faster. Similarly, I might see a favourable materials usage variance because, again, new equipment should hopefully use materials in a more efficient manner and generate less waste. So it's always worthwhile remembering that when we see one type of variance, we often see associated variance, um, variances elsewhere.